We begin with a walk down memory lane to a St. Louis fine dining icon that's been serving classic dishes like Steak Diane for 92 years. Our companion is Paul Shankman. It's not much to look at from the outside, but for more than 90 years, this 140-year-old building has been home to one of St. Louis's most legendary restaurants. It has survived fire, floods, prohibition, the Great Depression, and even threats of demolition. And yet it is still thriving, thanks to a determined family. And we also have our four-point rack of lamb. A devoted staff and loyal customers who know Al's is the place to go for a steak well done, served with a side dish of rich stories. Many of our customers have been coming here for generations and generations. The story starts with a soda truck driver named Al Baroni, whose regular stops included an old sugar warehouse turned saloon at the corner of First and Biddle. It was owned by a man named Julius Vogel. And one day he said, hey, Al, um, you know, I think my wife and I are going to retire. Would you like to purchase this building and business? And so my grandmother thought that was just fantastic. Louise Baroni thought running a saloon surrounded by steamboat docks and a steel mill would be busy enough to employ her entire family. So in 1925, the Baronis bought the bar and named it Al's. I think back in the old day, actually, my grandmother invited folks just into the kitchen to sit down and have egg sandwiches. And that's kind of how her name and her little niche uh, started. Though they called it Al's, Al kept his day job, leaving Louise in charge of the restaurant. And business was good. Boy, this is delicious. Bob Sherrill has been eating here since the mid-1960s. At noontime on a pretty spring day, There'd be a block long line of uh, people waiting, uh, hard hats, suits, all of us for the steam table that was down the middle. Louise kept the place going for 40 years until her death in 1965, passing it on to Al Jr., who also ran it for 40 years until his death in 2005. And that's when the torch was passed to Al's daughter, Pam, who has kept it going ever since. She believes that makes Al's the oldest family-run restaurant in St. Louis still doing business in its original location. But in 2015, they almost lost their location because the building sits in what would have been a parking lot for the proposed Riverfront Stadium. And that was not the only time Al's survived a near-death experience. In the 60s, the building behind us caught on fire. They were a, a bag a warehouse and company. So it was quite the fire. It was in January and uh, their building fell on top of us. And um, that's when then we had to kind of repurpose everything and changed it into the fine dining steakhouse that it is today. Next is our eight ounce center cut filet and our 12 ounce center cut filet. Pam's dad came up with an idea uh, a long time ago that uh, instead of having a menu, let's have a visual menu so the customer can see uh, what, what they're getting and what they're eating. This is a center cut New York strip, our four point rack of lamb. And it can be done traditionally. Our 14 ounce double bone pork chop. And it is smothered with a creamy shrimp sauce. We did once uh, have a menu printed but uh, he second thoughts about that and decided against it. But we keep it around just, just as a souvenir, just to look at, uh, look at the prices way back then, because that was a very long time ago. Never handed them out? Never handed them out, no. While those prices have gone up through the years, the area around Al's has gone down. It has one glamorous neighbor, but mostly the restaurant is surrounded by empty warehouses. And yet the customers keep coming. Some of the more notable regulars have private lockers stocked with their favorite wines. My grandfather started coming here back in the 50s and back when it was red and white tablecloths and uh, just absolutely fell in love with the place and, and the owner, Al Baroni. We lived in New York for a while and I can't compare 
anything that we had there to what we have here. The decor at Al's is also incomparable. The clubby formal dining room features woodwork carved by local monks and walls covered by rocks from the riverfront. The bar room mimics a steamboat and is surrounded by a mural based on a photograph of the riverfront taken in the 1890s, painted in the 1960s by a scenic designer from the Muni. And after a couple drinks or so, you'll feel like the floor is slanted. Well, it is. And I was told that this floor came out of a riverboat. Back when the Muni Opera had a lot of um, celebrities there, they stayed at the Chase Park Plaza is where they stayed, and then they would come downtown and have dinner at Al's. There was Howard Keel and Jane Powell. The table that's directly behind you, uh, we had Henry Fonda there, and he loved it here, and he made friends with my dad. So he would have the hotel bring him down every night, and then my dad would drive him back to the hotel. Of all the celebrities who have eaten here through the years, the one story they love to tell over and over again involves one of the most famous entertainers in history. But what makes the story so remarkable is not just who he was, but who else ate at his table. One evening, Frank Sinatra came in for dinner. By himself, and he uh, ordered two steaks. And um, my dad said, well, is someone going to be joining you? And uh, he said, no, no, I just need two steaks. And so Al says, Frank, he says, what are you doing? You're by yourself, you're ordering two steaks. What's the deal? And Frank Sinatra confessed that his driver was parked outside and his dog was in the car. And the second steak was for his dog. And my dad said, oh my goodness. Bring that dog in here. And so Frank and the dog had their steaks at table eight. That was a great bonding experience because both were very much dog lovers and, and so they were both thrilled. Celebrities aside, what Al's really celebrates is family tradition, and that includes the staff. We have a lot of longevity here. When you start at Al's, you pretty much retire at Al's. The current chef is the son of the previous chef, who retired last year after working at Al's 63 years. The woman in charge of salads and desserts inherited that job from her mother, who did it for 68 years. You know, like they said, what your mother do, your daughter do. I hope my daughter likes to make salads, but I might have her do it too because I'm almost ready to retire. Although Pam and Gary are not yet ready to retire, they have started the process of turning Al's over to their two daughters, making them the third generation of women to run this restaurant named for a man. I would like to think that my, my grandmother, my grandfather, my parents are, are looking down and, and hopefully they're proud of, of what we're doing and carrying things on. So that would make us very happy. And we also have our four point eight ounce or the 12 ounce filet and that's known as our and last but not seat. least as our 14 ounce the house special lobster tail, which is known as the beef Romano. Are there any questions? <laughs>